Hello and welcome to what what's the show again Tom I can't remember at all it's it's been you know we only just started doing it and I'm so confused by the name of the show or what the concept of the show is in general and I just like I wish there was a way to eloquently put what the show is that we do so well it's called Take Your Time. Oh, thank you so much. You're right. This is Take Your Time, a Persona 5 Royal in real time podcast where we play through Persona 5 Royal in real time according to the real time that is our lives, which is also the same as the in-game calendar's time, which is real, but also virtual because it is a video game. But the video game can feel real when it hits your emotions. I'm your host, Jonathan I- Dornbush, for this week. Yes, Tom? I thought that your your bit this time was going to uh-huh. be saying everything but the name. <laughs> <laughs> but then it yeah. just like it turned into both. Yes, yeah, yeah. I always I why do one bit when you can do both to a level that's not as funny is really my goal in life. The best jokes are the ones you have to explain. Exactly. That's the way I like to live. And anyway, <laughs> I'm joined as always by Tom Marks. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining me this week, Tom, for our 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 come down after pancakes. We're we're settling Indeed. into uh the 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 next chapter of the game which is going to be quite heavy though this week it's a little bit of a mishmash of of some story set up for for what we're about to get into and then some free time as we get into the mission start segment of this game because we are officially in the new palace segment yeah this one goes quick right yeah this one is this is the f- i think probably the fastest you go from one palace to the next except for like in terms of like main palace figures yes. getting into spoilers for later but yeah yeah, I uh, yeah that yeah that makes sense. I guess not knowing what comes ahead, but there's only so much time to play with there. But yeah, we mm-hmm. uh, we get officially into uh, the Shido Palace timing. We're we're starting to get into that. We'll, we'll discuss how that begins and everything. Obviously, we're not talking about the palace itself this week, uh, but we will be getting into that uh, in a very busy month ahead. Yes. Uh, but before before we do that and before we get into what may lie ahead, we do have our our typical house cleaning to do, including a lot of. Great viewer comments, because as I was saying, uh, last week's episode was so big, I want to make sure we give a uh, voice to everyone who's writing in about it. But Tom, why don't we start off with last week's pop quiz answer? Yes. Uh, so, last week's pop quiz question was, what does Operation Tie Him Up? Uh, and we did get a couple answers correct. Danimal Lover 01 and Devin both got this answer correct. Uh, Danimal Lover gave a ton of details about it, too. So, kudos <laughs> to listening close to Futaba. Um, this is... One, I think it's like the last detail that Futaba will tell you if you keep listening to her. Uh, Jonathan, did you, you you already saw the comments, so you already saw this one. Yeah. Um, the operation tie him up was when this is this is part of the plot hole exposition dump that Futaba will give you of like filling in all the plot holes, and the plot hole this fills in is well. If Sai was coming back and saw Akechi, then her wouldn't Akechi, the cognitive version of Akechi would appear in the place that they were in the metaverse where they were just sending Akechi to go <laughs> kill Joker, like that whole thing. Yeah. And so like, why didn't Akechi run into a cognitive version of himself is the question this is answering. And it's because of Operation Tie Him Up, in which <laughs> in the moments between... Sai running into Akechi and Futaba hitting the button to send Akechi to the metaverse. Makoto and Futaba and some other people went and kidnapped Akechi in the metaverse, cognitive Akechi in the metaverse, who, Mm -hmm. because Sai didn't know he was evil, was just some kid. (laughs) And tied him up and put him on a different floor of the police station to just leave him there so that he wouldn't run into himself. Which is great. (laughs) <laughs> it's yeah it's uh it, it is a hell of a a way to explain it uh but i also very much understand that they didn't want to probably have to animate all of that because that's a lot yeah uh, to throw in the midst of that explanation it's just a wonderful thing because it is one of those things where you're like wait why didn't he wouldn't there also be in a catchy and they're like no, no 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 don't worry in the like 30 seconds that they had they kidnapped him <laughs> super great t- like they should they should rob banks because <laughs> yeah the timing would give Dom Toretto a run for his money with some it of the would. schemes they pulled off. So, yeah, that's a, it's a hell of an inclusion to get to. But, yeah, thank you, Tom, for, for that pop quiz answer. And thank you to everyone who, who guessed at that uh, very interesting little way to explain uh, a part of a very complicated plot. Yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> but speaking of that plot, definitely did want to uh, give time to a lot of people's thoughts about uh, last week's uh, episode and obviously the the events that unfolded, uh, and just also all the, the wonderful sort of back and forth that happened uh, in there as well. I'm not going to go through all of uh, the comments or read all of them because some of them are pretty lengthy, uh, but did want to give one of the shout outs. Um, one thing we were talking about last week that I had brought up was sort of this like as we were going through Akechi's confidant line of sort of the, like, fine line of love and hate that seems to be there in the undercurrent. And obviously the game doesn't, uh, you know, acknowledge any sort of um, same, uh, you know, Joker being romantically involved with anyone who is not a woman in, in the game. Um, but obviously the clear undertones that he and Akechi are dating the whole time. Uh, and and Amy wrote a really, really great piece sort of about the... the uh, the balance of love and hate that's going on, uh, and said that there was a YouTuber uh, named Thought Bubble who has an MA in clinical psychology who sort of identified what's going on with Akechi and his uh, disorganized attachment style uh, was sort of the diagnosis that he, he was given and, and goes through a lot of detail essentially of how rank six, seven, and eight sort of portray elements of this idea and, and how it plays into all of that and, and a lot of deep dives on things that can happen with Akechi. They also link to some videos that I have not watched because they said there are spoilers for the entirety of Royal, so I have not clicked on those, do not worry. Uh, but and I'd also recommend people who haven't played Royal don't click on them then as well just yet, but uh, a lot of detail in there, which I, I really appreciated. Um, and yeah, I, I, I don't have anything more, I think, to say than the conversation we had last week, but I'm excited to see. I know that to a certain extent, you know, Akechi is still out there, and so we haven't talked about Akechi for the last time, but I don't know the extent to which Royal changes Akechi's story. Yeah, and the funny thing is, too, this this week we also get a little more of that, right? Like, just jumping ahead a little bit, there's one moment where you're watching Akechi on the news, and he says something along the lines of, like, talking about his strategy for catching the Phantom Thieves, being like, I lured them in, and then, like, the best, like, the person they least expected offered them a helping hand, and they, like, went for it. And he says something about, like, it's his same strategy as with romance, and it's like... Oh, so he's just legit <laughs> directly talking about how, like, he was dating Joker. Like, yes. that is, they, that cannot be interpreted as anything but, like, a, a reference to the his relationship with Joker. Yeah, yeah, it, it it feels unequivocally that that has to be the meaning for it, but yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, that's, that's sort of the the most we get of Akechi at this point. I think they're, yeah, the, the bit right. of dialogue they say is like, we can worry about him later. Shido is our mate. Like, we got to focus yeah. on this guy. So, uh, yeah, there's more to say there, but uh, thank you, Amy, for for really going through all of that and for, for those links for anyone who are in is interested in that. Uh, they also said, sorry for the long comment. I played P5R twice in lockdown uh, and have been trapped indoors with these thoughts knocking around my head. Thank you for this podcast and for creating a safe space for all of us to share our head cannons and analysis. And of course, because we are very, very clear, Joker and Akechi are dating. It's just, you can't deny it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, moving on from there, uh, Alyssa, just a quick comment, said, just want to say thank you for doing the show. It's the first thing I listen to every Monday morning, which thank you so much. We, we are happy to help start off your week that way. Uh, Sam said, excellent episode covering one of the best weeks in the game. I did not catch the pancakes bit in the game the first time through. But I was still sure, about 95% sure, that Akechi was the traitor. The game gives quite a few smaller hints, and honestly, from a gameplay perspective, it also doesn't really make sense for it to be anyone else. Plus, he's even freaking named Akechi, one of the most famous traitors in Japanese history. A thing I did huh. not know. Um, yeah, I, but I, I guess it would... Either. Yeah, I guess it would be, um, yeah, there's there's a few, like, American names you could have someone be named in the story, and it would be quite obvious. Benedict? Um, yeah, yeah, or just, like, oh, yeah, who? Well, I wonder what Judas is up to. I wonder if they're a good guy, yeah. um, if you start to get into biblical stuff. But uh, Sam also said, what I, mo I love most about this entire sequence is that Akechi being the traitor isn't really supposed to be a twist at all. The real twist is that the Phantom Thieves already knew he was evil, and it's all about their plan to trap him. It's a perfect use of the classic Ocean. 11 style heist and yeah i i love that a lot too especially watching it through now i was like oh it doesn't treat him being the villain as the worst part of it like it kind of quickly goes through his murder of of joker because it is all about the like ha but we got him yeah yeah it's a that's a really good point that it, it even if you figured out him right 
you still don't like it's still a surprising sequence to you about what's going on yeah absolutely it, it's i i think uh sam is totally right that the game even if you don't catch the pancakes moment it's pretty obvious that chances are it's not going to be like yusuke or on or makoto who betrays you at this point i mean it could have been makoto to yeah. some extent right like not probably not but like it still could have been like maybe you don't know sure yeah but yes he is the most likely culprit by far exactly but i i guess yeah you could make a case for makoto i guess you could make a case for haru just because like she's one of the later additions and also like had that moment of doubt with the phantom thieves of right you know oh are they keeping information from me and so maybe she kept information from them like i guess you could make that argument but it's hard to really come down to a culprit who it could be besides Akechi who really makes the most sense. It could be just Ryuji said something dumb and then they got caught because of it. If if Persona 5 was a comedy game, it absolutely would have been that. Because, like, him saying something on, you know, like, April 12th would have yeah. been, yeah, the, the cause of all their concerns. Yeah. Now I kind of want that version of the game. Anyway, <laughs> uh... Zenpai also said, I'm curious to hear about your thoughts uh, on the Thieves' Den. I know it doesn't have anything to do with the story, but I found, I sometimes found myself starting the game just to beat my friends in Tycoon. I think we talked about it a few months back, just a little bit. Yeah, we talked about Um, it uh, in a previous episode. I'm not sure exactly which. I haven't gone back to it really since then, just because I've been so focused on, on the main campaign. But I have noticed in the last couple weeks, I've gotten a lot more of the the achievements in there mm. and so I, I might go back just to see what i've unlocked but i haven't really spent too much more time in there but tycoon is yeah. very fun i'll say yeah um games coffee and collecting said i won't lie i didn't catch a catchy's pancake slip up but looking back it seems so extremely obvious uh there was a lot of just sort of like back and forth of people saying whether or not they did catch it uh val said my boyfriend caught the pancakes thing the first go around and when he brought it up to me some somewhere mid game i totally didn't believe him and blew him off and then it turns out he was right. Uh, I honestly never would have noticed it around the first uh, for the first go around. Kudos to everyone who did. Um, and yeah, that's that's been a funny thing to see as like sort of the people who did and didn't catch it because I legitimately did not pay attention to it the first time around. Yeah, I don't think it's one of those things that you have to feel bad about not catching. Right? Like it is. It's one of those moments where if you catch it, it it feels very obvious. But if you don't, it's like really easy to just like miss and not think about yeah especially because it takes months for it to pay off right exactly like it yeah. takes so long for that moment to pay off yeah and, and, and it's really easy like even if you do catch it to get halfway through the game and be like i guess that was nothing yes exactly that's what i think works so well about this game being so long is that it can yeah. do that like that's just the thing that's the thing a movie can't do but like a tv show can do which is which is what i love about sort of serialized storytelling um yeah and yeah, Joe said, I absolutely caught the line the first time playing base P5 and could not believe the rest of my party was so stupid. <laughs> I'm used to JRPGs making their characters blissfully ignorant to things that are totally obvious to the player, uh, but I thought it was ridiculous. Uh, so when it's revealed that they did catch it and have been plotting against to catch you all along, I was glad that the party wasn't a bunch of idiots, but it was also kind of mad the game let me think they were for so long. Hmm. Um, and I, I will say, I think... The, the thing that really solidified it for me, especially the second time around playing, is the the fact that this game is being told from a future perspective backward and that you're recounting and you're a character who has been drugged and has memory problems. So granted, <laughs> you know, you remember very, you know, most of the story, but you do forget the most important bits. Um, it's not the most unrealistic way and does kind of get around the idea that the characters were ignorant of this the whole time, which I, I got to say also. Uh, police, maybe if your truth serum causes memory loss, you shouldn't use that truth serum. Yeah. It seems like counter, uh, counterproductive. Forget the truth is, is a better name for that serum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, just a couple last ones. Red Panda said, really enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you guys have more thoughts about this section of the game, please consider talking about it in future episodes. Uh, I caught the pancakes line during my first playthrough, but I didn't think too much of it. This moment and Futaba taking Akeshi's phone is really good foreshadowing, especially the phone part because it seems like it's just a silly scene. 
Um, how many details does Joker tell Psy is, is a thing that's sort of up for debate, uh, Red Panda asks. But from a gameplay perspective, we play all his memories, but does he tell Psy everything? Even if he didn't, it wouldn't take much work for the police to figure out who the Phantom Thieves are. <laughs> also, man, it would be really funny if he canonically tells Psy everything that you do, because he'd be like, well, then I, like, sat down on the train, but there was a seat, so I got to read a book, but I don't know what I wanted to read. I ended up reading about Chinatown. Maybe I'll go there with my friend later. We'll see. Like, It'd be so funny, too, if he's telling it, like, theoretically the way you're playing the game. So it was like, so I went to Shinjuku, but I realized I didn't need to go to Shinjuku, so I took the train back to Shibuya, and I was yeah. trying to find the store I needed, and then I realized it was in Kichijoji, uh, and then I... <laughs> looked up a guide i don't know how to explain that to you but i looked up a guide uh and got some help i guess he and googled it yeah i googled it uh on the way let's say uh and then yeah i got to the store and then i realized they don't sell things until friday so it didn't it, make any sense it would also be like pathological in some cases where you'd be like so i would just be like looking at her notes and be like so let me get this straight in the month of september you called your teacher to make you coffee 20 Eat. times <laughs> and and she quit her maid job but she's still showing up as a maid yeah and you just you, sat there and read books while she did this you paid a fortune teller 50 dollars every day to just tell you that your friends like you more now like yeah. what are you talking about just <laughs> hang out with them what is wrong with you oh man <laughs> again persona 5 the comedy version would be a great version of this game yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you to everyone who, who wrote in with comments. Uh, obviously, it was a super packed week, and, and we'll be talking about the fallout of it, obviously, for the weeks to come, uh, because it is sort of the turning point that gets us into the end game here. Uh, and I think there's no better point to just jump in then to what happens right after all that. So let's get into yeah. it. Uh, we're getting into the week of November 22nd to November 28th, uh, where we start off uh, for everyone who's obviously played. We start off with a more story-focused side of the week and then get into uh, what we've done in our free time, though we have a few free evenings in there as well. Uh, but let's start with, uh, you know, the story side of it. And I do want to say something that I appreciate. The way this week starts is a thing that goes on throughout the week, and, and Tom, I'm curious how you felt about it. Uh, but I just like the idea, you know, obviously Joker can't go out. He's not going to school. He's not doing his normal things. And so the, the scenes that we are so used to getting with him every day now get the other Phantom yeah. Thieves in there. And I think it's such a cool touch. Yeah, I really like it. Um, we we get this week, it starts off with Ryuji on the train, listening to other people talking. Of course, he happens to get the exact spot Joker gets, but, you know, let's not get into that. Uh, he's on the train hearing people talking about the, you know, the Phantom Thieves and praising Shido and, and kind of talking about the Thieves as the villains that they are and being found out and all of this and, and, and all of this praise and love for Shido. Uh, that will be a common running theme throughout the week. Yes. Um, did you, so you, you wrote it down on the run of show, you got a friend text. Yeah, I wasn't sure if these were the same, but your friends text you to make sure you're not dead or whatever. Um, yeah. I so assume, fr- sorry, Go I was going to say, I just, I assume it's based on who from your confidants knows you're a phantom thief. Maybe, but no. Okay. So, yes, but no. Everyone who texted me was... I think everyone who texted me was maxed out except for one. Oh, interesting. Because I got a text from Shinya, who is level two for me. So, yes, but he, the way he asks it implies that he doesn't know yet. He just knows you're, you're friends with the Phantom Thieves. Oh, I guess that's true. Because, yeah, he asks, he's like, oh, no, did something happen to the leader of the Phantom Thieves? I'm worried. And you basically tell him, like, oh, right. no, he's okay. Or, like, they're okay. Don't worry. Sure. But anyway, the first, the first one yeah. I got was Kawakami. Me too. Yeah. Okay. So maybe this is just the exact same order. I don't know, but, but we'll find out. I, I know at least one of the texts I got was someone who's maxed out that I've maxed out that you haven't. Okay. So we'll okay. see when we get there. Cool. Okay. Who did I forget to tell you? I'm, I maxed out someone. We'll find out. Uh, anyway, we get this text from uh, Kawakami, as you were saying, and then to further sort of, uh, illuminate that joker isn't around at the moment we get a shot of class without joker from from right. his the normal perspective but his seat is empty um and and we'll learn as the week goes on that kawakami is helping to keep up the ruse that essentially he's out with a personal matter has gone back home uh please don't you know 
spread any rumors or thoughts about it. He's just dealing with a personal thing and don't butt into people's business is basically right. what Kawakami comes down to with that. But anyway, uh, the day continues to go on. We get another text. Mine was from Mishima. Yeah, same. Okay. Um, and, and I like these texts too, just in general yeah. of just like the people that know you're a phantom thief checking in to make sure you're not dead. It's like, it's both nice and also like, maybe you shouldn't be telling people you're not dead. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you could leave them. You could you could leave them unread for like a couple days, probably. Yeah, um, I think they'd understand once once the grand reveal that you're hoping for happens. But sure, yeah, uh, not not the best probably to uh, put into writing that you're alive. Anyway, uh, yeah, we get that text from Mishima, and then it's sort of like we're we're getting just through Joker's home life at the moment. So uh, we get a quick warning from Sh- Sojuro, warning you not to like do anything to get attention. Or, or whatnot, but the the bulk of this day begins essentially with the group wanting to try to get into the Diet Building. We we realized, you know, last week that Shido has a palace. It is the Diet Building, but we don't know what form it takes just yet. Uh, right. And so the group all uh, goes to try to figure it out, um, and we're we're thinking all the way back uh, till to april about the mental shutdowns on the subway and kind of realizing and putting together like oh if he's really been responsible for all of this he's been behind these machinations since the very beginning yeah um and and an interesting thing that i thought they they brought up was like well like how how could he have done that like that that would have been so he just doesn't care about those people but it did help like a trans uh transportation minister i think change happen Right, uh, and so he's getting things in there. But anyway, we meet after school uh, to guess the keyword. Can't figure it out. Uh, I I love the scene. On goes up to a random guy who works there, trying to pretend to be from the school newspaper, and be like, "Tell me about Shido." And the guy just has nothing but praise. Obviously, right. Uh, we get nothing from him. And then we decide, like, this isn't working. We see a security guard on a walkie-talkie. Let's just bounce, and we'll try to figure this out another day. Um, did it, did anything else about that scene in particular stand out to you? It's a pretty, like, they just go. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not really. It's just them, like, I mean, this is, the, I guess one of the main things here is that, like, they, they aren't super used to this of just, like, having no idea how to get into somebody's palace. Yeah. So these sort of three days of them floundering a little bit is, like, sort of unique in yeah. that it doesn't usually take them that long. Um, yeah. But... Otherwise, this particular scene is just sort of them, like you said, just talking about that stuff and trying to figure it out and making lots of wrong guesses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's really interesting that you say floundering because I hadn't thought about it. But yeah, as soon as you said that, it's a very funny transition to go from like, man, they had, as people were saying in the comments, like this Ocean's Eleven style plan perfectly mapped out. And then they're just like, oh, we didn't think about the next step. Oh, my God. What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> yeah. And they just don't have any plan right now. It's really interesting. Um, well, they didn't know it was Shido yet, yes, right? Yeah, so they, like, yeah. this is just, like, them guessing. I do like the idea, though, that this, met- this Metaverse nav just, like, can take as many wrong answers as you want, so you can literally just say anything that comes into your mind, and, like, maybe it'll work. <laughs> it should password reset, like, hard lock you at some point and be like, you've guessed too many times, please wait right. one hour. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they go back to the cafe realizing, like, they don't want to get in trouble there. Shido, of course, is on the news talking about the Phantom Thieves and saying, like, they may be no more, but he knows that, like, people are still uh, anxious. Like, society at large is anxious, and he's enraged at the anxiety that people have to go through. Of course, he's just such a good man. Uh, yeah. And so he, he just wants to help uh, assuage this anxiety of all of ours. And, and we, we talk a little bit more in a, a group text later about... Just this general, like, we, we get a sense of how beloved Shido is at the moment, and it's like, I think every political show or prediction website or things like that are just like, oh, he's gonna win, like, he is just the assumed winner. Uh, he was a cabinet minister who was specially appointed, like, he is sort of this golden child in politics. Um, and there's right. there's no stopping him at this point, it seems. Yeah, but, that's that's very much the the... The vibe of the whole week as well is just people being like, why are we even having an election, right? Yeah. Like, it's just going to be him. Yeah, it, it's just a foregone conclusion. We'll see that more throughout the week. But uh, before we get to the rest of that week, we do have a wonderful free evening inside the cafe. So what did you do, Tom? I uh, pumped some iron. I worked out. Me too, because I had no useful books to read. Yeah. So worked out. And then we got to November 23rd. 
Uh, moving, yes. Moving on to there, we got another. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. You say you got two friend texts. I only got I did. one. There we go. There so, it yeah. is. Yeah. You got Takemi? Yes. I got Chahaya and Takemi. Okay, yeah, there Ch- we go. Chahaya being one the person I've a person I've maxed that you haven't. Okay, yeah, there yeah. we go. So yes, no Chahaya text for me on that end. But anyway, uh, after after those check in texts again, where people are like, "Hey, Phantom Thief leader, you doing okay? We heard you died. I'm good. Don't worry about it." Uh, we move <laughs> on from there, and everyone meets at the cafe, still trying to guess what his. Uh, you know, his palace may look like Sai is even there to help out with things. She's learning a bit about how this whole metaverse nav thing works and, and how we get into it. Uh, obviously as someone who, uh, you know, had this happen to them, it, it probably is an eye opening experience. I would guess. I really like that. Sai has kind of just become a party member. Like it's really, it's interesting in a game that has the entire time positioned your party as like the kids fighting the adults that suddenly Sojiro and Sai are, like, really on your side, yeah. right? I, I really, really like that. It changes the vibe a little bit, again, in a way that's just, like, super cool to be to be like, oh, these people are care about you as well and are, like, really trying to help you, too. And it's, yeah. it makes it feel like more than just, like, a bunch of kids doing a thing. Well, and I think it works really well to the sort of, like, black and white reality versus, like, it, things aren't black and white nature of the game because it is so much about, like, seeing the gray area of things and in people and all that sort of thing. But for, for the most part, like the Phantom Thieves go about their lives as like the adults are the, like, and, and a lot of the incidental dialogue you'll get from other characters is like, Oh, adults can be so much of a problem. And obviously all of the people they're going after, say for Futaba are adults and, and trying to fix the problem of those adults who are ruining the world. But it's like, no, there are good adults. (laughs) And here we have two examples of that. And especially if people like Sojuro, who you didn't like at first, chances are, like who who is very much someone you didn't think was on your side. So yeah, it really I think plays into that super well to just have them be a part of things now. Um but anyway, as we're going through this and trying to figure everything out, uh we Ryuji I believe asked Sojiro to turn the TV on so that we can maybe hear something about Cheeto, get some some ideas and and guess uh, a little bit more about him, but Akechi, of course, is on TV pointing to uh Tom what you were saying earlier. Right. I don't think there's anything else from what he was saying that you didn't already mention. Uh, I think we pretty no. much cover it. Yeah, he basically just, like, talks about how... He's trying to present it like it was all a big... It was all a plan, right? Yeah. Like, everything he did from praising them while they were hated and... Or, or not... Pra- excuse me, sorry. Hating them while they were loved and then also saying while they were starting to be hated, coming around on them was all, like, a calculation in his part. And obviously we know there is some truth to that but also we know there is more going on and so he's really really playing into this idea that he is like a champion hero that deserves all this praise and credit basically. yeah this this mastermind <clears throat> who created this amazing plan who yeah. could who else could have created an amazing plan but akaji and right. the phantom thieves you idiot we got you he just wanted to love you. Why did you do this to us? Uh, anyway, we, we, you know, we don't get much from Akechi. As I said earlier, we, we basically say, hey, we can worry about Akechi later. We need to focus on how to get into Shido's palace. But luckily, Shido happens to be campaigning in Yonkin Jaya at the station. Yeah. <laughs> what a this turn is, of events. What a coincidence. <laughs> this is another one of those, like, uh, Japanese cultural things that's very different in the West, right? Of, like... I, I also played Yakuza Like a Dragon, and there's a similar sort of section where you have uh, candidates for political office, like, touring the, their neighborhoods on buses, giving speeches from the roofs of buses. And that's, like, something that is completely not at all a thing that happens <laughs> in the U.S. Like, we, we obviously have the campaigns that go around the country, I guess just for any non-U.S. listeners. Like, obviously, uh, presidential candidates will go around the, the country uh, yeah. sometimes on, on bus tours, but like they're not on their bus giving speeches. Like they go to event spaces and they have major things planned out and it's very orchestrated and very um, like large scale. I don't really, I can't really think of any, even local, I'm sure it happens in some states, but I can't think of a local politician ever when I was like living in New York or here where I was like, oh yeah, we should just head down to the local corner shop to go hang out with them. I know it happens a bit more these days, but 
Um, or or that you could just hear one of them from your, your exact, cafe yes, and be like, that. oh, let's go talk to that guy. Yeah, like that. There would be no shot of that. So, yeah. Right. Anyway, we uh, I, I like this a little bit, too, because it's it's funny. You can really not spend much time in Young and Jaya, depending on how your play style. Like other yeah. than maybe going outside to hang out with Futaba or going to get stuff from the guy who sells you, you know, old equipment and whatnot, you can really kind of ignore that space. Um, yeah. And here's a fun little thing where you essentially have to run through some of the back streets that you maybe didn't go through. Um, and, and it opens up in a way to go to the station. Uh, you head over there, you see Shido talking. He, uh, for no particular reason, I just decided to point out that he mentioned sailing and luxury. Mm. Um, you know, just just in his speech, he talks about sailing into the future uh, and wanting to let people live in the luxury that they deserve as a country and whatnot. Just a thing. Um, and as I wrote down, uh, nothing says a man of the people like talking about a luxury and sailing. Yeah. You know, people all the time are just out on their luxury yachts. Anyway, uh, after the speech, Ryuji pulls a Ryuji and he runs does. up to talk to Shido and just accosts him, which I love. Yeah, super uncool. Like, borderline getting arrested worthy uncool. Oh, yeah. This would, like, if, if you did this to, like, Joe Biden on the campaign trail before he got <laughs> elected, like, Secret Service would have bodied you and you would yeah. be out for the count. Um, but anyway, he rushes up to, to talk to him. Guards stop Ryuji. And there's sort of this back and forth of like, all right, you were that guy who was a jerk to us all those months ago when we went out for our buffet. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. And then and then realizes more than that, too. Exactly. Right? Uh, yeah, we, we have this back and forth. Shido really isn't like remembering this because, you know, he's an adult who doesn't care about two kids who yelled at him six months ago. Uh, yeah, but... He's not giving you the time of day at all, which is really beneficial because you're in basically no disguise whatsoever. And if he looked at your face for half a second, he would probably be like, wait, that's the guy we just had executed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's what And and Joker has this realization, because, yeah, it's not only the guy he just had executed, it's the guy he ran into at the buffet and was a jerk to by the elevator, and is also the guy who, of course, on the big night that caused Joker to be where he is, was the, the guy in question who essentially uh, threatened him and, and caused this all to happen and to ruin Joker's life and was the guy harassing the woman. Um, yeah. He, Which... Which you as a player probably know by now and have yeah. known for a little bit, but he finally pieces together. Yes, yeah, and this was something, uh, forgive me, I just want to pick up the name. Joe had said, like, at least it was it, it was good the game made you realize everyone with the, the Akechi moment kind of was in on it by some point. But it is very funny that Joker just had no real crystal clear realization moment until now. Yeah. Um, but for all, all that said, Joker finally comes to this realization oh, Shido is the guy who caused me to be where I am and essentially caused the Phantom Thieves to happen incidentally. Yeah. Because um, we're Joker not to be here. This game wouldn't have happened, probably. Um, so we realize all of that. Uh, Joker has this realization. Uh, and we all reconvene back at the cafe and make all these connections about how he's been involved. Sojuro is making the connections that he was the guy involved with Wakaba. Uh, and, and her research and, and kind of putting a stop to that and how all of this, you know, cosmic confluence of events can't just be coincidence. Like there has to be more to it. Um, right. Whether like, you know, I don't think necessarily Shido put all of this into play to be able to have all of this happen for his political gain, but the group is very much of, of a concern like, oh, we, we care way more about Shido's involvement. Real. Like we realize now how much it matters. Um, I don't think there's any other huge revelations from that conversation. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but no, it's a fairly quick one. I mean, that, that's the thing. These all three of these days are like pretty, they're eventful, but like it is, I think it is extended a little bit to show sort of like that. They don't, that they're having a little more trouble with this. And it's like yeah. a little bit more of like a, they're even a, a, at a couple points, like theorizing, maybe he has some sort of shield that around his palace that they don't know right. how he was able to erect it because he actually knows about the metaverse. I think that that's why they're taking it slower here is just like, they want to build up the idea that this guy is like a little bit tougher. Yeah. And yeah, Ryu Ryuji brings that up every time they go to the diet building of like, maybe he's got a special move we don't know about. And I love that he thinks of it in like video game terms of like, Oh, maybe he figured out the secret combo that we don't know. And that's how he's yeah. beating us. 
But uh, yeah, that pretty much is, is the events of that day. And then we get another free evening in the cafe. So what did you do, Tom? Uh, that evening I worked out. Nice. What a surprise. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, of course, had Kawakami make curry because, yes. you know. Uh, anyway, moving on to November 24th, uh, we get another scene of, of a student on the train. This time it's on hearing people discuss Shido. Surprise, surprise. People still love Shido. Uh, I got, here we go. More, more difference. You got three texts. I got two. Okay. Who did you have? Uh, I got Shinya, Hifumi, and Yoshida. I'm at rank nine with Hifumi, so that explains ah. it. Ah. Yeah. So you only got Shinya and, and Yoshida. Yoshida. Which gotcha. was really funny. Like, I know that it makes sense in terms of everyone who knows I'm a Phantom Thief, but it's real funny because I have not thought about Yoshida once in, like, <laughs> months. That dude, I barely... He doesn't exist right now. And I was like, oh, right, yeah, I'm sorry. You, you sir, thank you, yeah. Um... Yeah, but, and he's about to, like, lose an election or whatever. I know, yeah. Like, it's kind of an important time for him, and I'm like, oh, my God, dude, yeah, hey, I'm sorry, I forgot you existed, we haven't talked in six <laughs> months, but you <laughs> did get me a lot of money, so thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, we get those texts, and then it's right back to the diet building, basically, uh, and you can guess the keyword. I guessed it on my first try. I don't know if you tried any of the wrong guesses, because obviously we knew at this point. I but. didn't try the wrong guesses this time. I okay. might have. I don't remember if I got it right my very first time playing or not. I don't either. I feel like what it would probably do is my guess is it would give you more flashbacks to things Shido has said that make it clear that it is a yacht. <laughs> I, I think it does. There's a couple other situations where you can get like the wrong guesses on things. And yeah. usually what it does is like, it'll be like, that doesn't work. And then it'll just like remove that option from the, That's like, true. the choice. Yeah. And then it'll just like, you keep going until you get the wrong one. Yeah, you're right. It might or do the right that. One. But, um, yeah, obviously it's a ship. Uh, yeah. if the, if the luxury and sailing, he, he mentioned sailing quite a few times, which I enjoy is just like a metaphor that I don't normally hear, but anyway, we guess it correctly. And then we get another cut scene. We're back into Hooray. it and we get to see the palace for the first time. And, uh, yeah. I think it's a really, really well done cutscene because of the way it gives you the scope of, of this palace. Um, and, you know, the Phantom Thieves get into the metaverse and they're like, oh, things kind of seem normal right now. Like, it just looks like the building's the same. What's changed? And then it sort of does that, like, big pullback reveal that, oh, the Dia building is on a ship that is sailing through uh, Japan and is essentially sailing by a crumbling sinking country, but it is staying afloat and surviving through the degradation of society around it. Um, yeah. I really like the design of this palace, but also I really do like, um, I really like this, this ship concept too. And it is especially potent coming directly after size where the whole point, like a huge, huge point of size palace was that her palace was crazy distorted, but everything around it was so normal that they could use it in a heist and that yep. she still saw people as completely normal humans, right? And that the world around her palace was just Tokyo. It was just normal. And then you go to Shido's palace and the world around his palace is not only not normal, it is literally destroyed in his eyes. He has yep. absolutely no sort of thought that it is like this redeemable place. It is yeah. just a flooded destruction. Well, and we, like, we haven't gotten probably a, I, I guess Kaneshiro is the closest to it, because we really haven't gotten someone whose palace goes beyond sort of the structure that it's focused on. Um, yeah. to this extent, like uh, Futaba's, you can argue did, but that it's still, it was a, like, it was an exaggerated, uh, take on a small space. Like it was still essentially yeah. her house, but in the metaverse, that house created, you know, a desert, but here right. he sees everything around him as crumbling and worthless and, and destroyed and him and, and everyone who's there, they are the thing that matters. And, and yeah, there's. Through. The other one, I guess, is Big Bang Burger being in space, but yeah, like, even true. even that one wasn't like, I don't know, it was just like a space station. It was kind of like, it wasn't destructive to the world. It was yeah. just separate from it. Yeah, here, it like, this is, and I think it brings up some interesting points, and obviously I won't spoil where the story goes, but like, I think it brings up some interesting points about like, the idea of how powerful 
and and depraved like his palace has become like he is so far gone that he his evilness has been able to conjure this creation which is just mm-hmm. on a scale that we haven't seen before yeah um, and uh that's something that again shout out to patron saint of the podcast andrew gofarb uh was so- something that he i remember him telling me very early on when i was playing was like the way this game handles the scale and the incremental and, and large scale increases i think is really really well done and this is a great example of that yeah i agree uh, but anyway, moving on, we we get to you know the, through that cutscene, we we get a <clears throat> excuse me a sense of what the palace is like, and uh, it's time to start exploring a little bit of of this palace. Uh, oh, there's there's one thing I did want to from that cutscene. I did uh, Haru says a line that I really liked, which was, "Even though this country may sink, he alone will survive," and that I think yeah. really really well encapsulates just how how far gone he is. Right. Um, but anyway. We get this idea that uh, it's sailing through a sinking city. We realize that we have essentially until December 17th to complete the palace because that's the day before the election. Uh, And what's interesting is, you know, as soon as we we're on the deck of the ship and we're in our normal normal clothes, but as soon as we walk in, we switch into our our Phantom Thief clothing. But we also notice that everyone inside is wearing a mask to an extent. It's it's pretty basic, but they're all wearing masks around us. Um, Yeah, I like this idea of this, like, masquerade ship also just being the, the, you know, it's so interesting, right? Because the whole game is talking about how the masks people put on or the masks that you think people put on or, like, what you think of a person is not actually maybe what they are in actuality. And then Shido is the definition of that where, like, he looks like he's really good, but he's actually very evil, and he perceives everyone around him as being the same. Yeah. He perceives every other person as putting on a mask to look one way and <laughs> actually behave another. And, like, that's super telling about his character, and it also just feeds into the themes of the game as a whole really, really well. Totally. And what's really interesting is we'll get a little more clarity as this day goes on of these people's... Uh, perspective within the metaverse if that makes sense like these uh cognitions and and sort of what they think is going on because as we we quickly get into our first battle as we get in sort of to the entrance of the ship and we can talk about the ship itself a little bit but obviously we'll we'll have the full palace to do that but we we have our first boss sort of at the top of the flight of stairs and we finish that battle and everyone around us all of these uh human cognitions are all like woohoo great job that was wonderful everyone yay it it was a show to them (laughs) They thought it yep. was, you know, uh, a part of the entertainment on the ship. Uh, they really don't seem to understand how at risk they are. Uh, I forget right. who exactly says it, but it's like they think they're safe here, um, which is just a really, really interesting, I think, element to what goes on here, especially because we're going to realize people being part of the ship matters a lot more as we go forward. Mm-hmm. Um we quickly, you know, we go up a couple flights of stairs in the sort of opening uh, atrium room uh, and we we walk through we're gonna quickly senses the treasure is ahead uh but we reach very quickly a door with five key card slots uh meanwhile over the loudspeaker we're hearing a bill being unanimously passed with uh you know shido's voice talking about some bill just going through no problem it seems everything's going his way on his side uh and we sort of realize we need to prove to get through this door, we need to prove and essentially pretend that we're on his side uh, to be able to get through. So we need some sort of qualification, but we don't know how to do that. So we start asking around the guests here. Um, yeah. And again, you get this really great sense of like, oh, all these people are just sort of living in a lavish luxury on the ship that they think they are safe, that they are VIP or like as close to VIPs as possible. They're being treated well. They're, they're protected and whatnot and just having a great time. Uh, and you run throughout the ship ar- around this floor, getting Intel from a few of the phantom thieves. And then you all meet up by the nearby safe room. Um, before we get to that Intel, was there anything else about sort of this like opening area you want to mention that I haven't? Not really. Um, it's, it's, I mean, we'll dig into it as we get further in. I do think it's, it's interesting, right? That like one of the points they bring up is, is along the lines of like everyone, most, you don't really talk to shadows or cognitions very often in palaces, right? They're mostly like kind of one note. 
yeah. and these people are capable of a lot more than that and i think there's a line about how that's indicative kind of of the palace ruler himself right is that like he knows people are smart right and he's one step ahead of them sort of a mm-hmm. lot of the in, in a lot of this um yeah. and so it's a different sort of thing the fact that you're interrogating cognitions like this the closest thing right is kind of uh uh okumura when you're like talking to the the workers to try to get their key cards or whatever but even then they're like very forgive the the thing but robotic right (laughs) like they are very sort of like set and not really like having actual conversations or anything yeah 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 at that point they are already transformed to a certain extent so yeah it's it's a really interesting sort of uh, confluence of things going on here. We uh, see sort of everyone's varying interactions. Some people have a better time talking to the cognitions than others, aka Ryuji, can't get anything out of anyone. Uh, and we all meet together in the safe room on this floor to get a sense of what's going on. And we essentially learn that we need uh, a letter of introduction from five different VIPs uh, on the ship. Uh, and that these letters will turn into the key cards we need, essentially. Um, the people specifically that we need them from include, and this sort of gives you a a, uh, a swath of the people Shido believes are under his influence. Uh, we got a politician named uh, Oe, I believe. Uh, another is someone of nobility who is by the pool. Uh, we got the president of a TV station who plays slots at night, and then we get a president of an IT company, and then the last is a cleaner huh weird that he would like a cleaner that's so strange of all these types it's very funny they don't know what a cleaner is yeah um but anyway i do like that this sort of shows the idea it's like oh he's got you know politics uh nobility in the country the television stations and you know information and technology under his belt is essentially what we're getting here and cleaning supplies obviously all important cleaning supplies he is the master of windex is i think what we can all agree on uh anyway we realize that this is what we need to do but we're gonna take our time with it not just rush into the palace i do enjoy there's not really a reason they don't immediately go in they kind of are just like let's you know let's not rush into this let's just make sure we we can handle this appropriately and then you bounce but like you could have kept going i think yeah, um, usually they like they like to take the take the beginning slow. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it, it it essentially just keeps it in pace with the rest of the game. But uh, we do that. We finish the palace, and then we're done. And it's back to a free evening in the cafe. You can even try calling Kawakami for a back rub, and she's like, "Nah, I'm sorry." We, we, or Morgana stops you. Um, yeah. Though you can call her to make coffee for you, which I think is funny. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, what Which did you I did. do? I did too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to waste a night. Come on. Uh, sure. What did you do though? Uh, since we couldn't work out because we were, we're too, too tired, tired from the metaverse, uh, I tried to play the lat- the third level of the dice video game to try oh, to max okay. out that game so that I could just like, uh, you know, have it done and get the charm or whatever for funsies. Cause there yeah. was literally nothing else productive to do in the evening. Um, and I lost, Oh no! Even with the cheat, because I haven't played game, the dice game yet. The dice game is stupid. <laughs> what is it? Can you tell? Because I might not get the chance to play it. What so the is dice it? game is: it gives you two dice to roll, two okay. six-sided die, and you have to hit some certain number. And then if you don't, you lose. And if you do, you win. And so the first one is just like you have to roll above an eight. And then okay. I think the second one, I can't. I can't remember exactly what the second one is. Um, and then the third one is you have to roll a multiple of four. So you have to roll at least four, eight, or 12. Okay. And the stupid thing is that the cheat, whereas the cheat in the other one is just like, oh, you insta win, right? Yeah. The cheat in this one is just you get more dice rolls, but it's not even that many more dice rolls. Oh. So in the four one, you have to roll a four, an eight, or a 12. And you have to um, do it in four rolls. But if you use the cheat... You get six rolls. <laughs> That's not that much. No, so I just didn't do it. Like, it was just nothing I could do. I just didn't roll one of those numbers. <sighs> That's a bummer. 
That's, sure. Yeah. That's a so I, when you say what you do, let me let me. I yeah. look up the odds of that real so, quick. So you go ahead. No, I also played a video game because I was like, I got nothing to do tonight. Uh, and I played, I still need to beat the fighting game. So I was doing that one. Which is great because you get with the sheet, you get ninety nine seconds to do the combo, and so like yeah, it's fine. That, how that much one I makes up. sense, right? It yeah. goes from like ten seconds to like ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it, you can do it no problem, um, which is good for me because I'm bad at button combos for fighting games. So that worked out, but yeah, I, the dice it's still unfair. Then it still doesn't quite work. Yeah, so like let me let me look at the math here, Relica. Fourteen plus eight is twenty two plus three so it's like about a 25 percent chance to roll a four and eight or a 12 on two dice two okay. six-sided dice and then you get four rolls and then you get you so you get six rolls so i don't know the math on that and i yeah. can't do it quick but <laughs> you know what i mean that's it's like 25 yeah. percent chance is like low and going from four rolls to six rolls is not like an a large increase no it's still it still can be really hard to do yeah that's weird okay that's good yeah. to know um well, I'm sorry it didn't work out for you, but I, I was... But the funny, the funny thing is it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. it, normally I would reload a save, but this time I was like, I literally don't care. Yeah, <laughs> was, I'm just going to keep going. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that, that was my thing, too. It was like, I, I knew I would beat the fighting game because you get so much time, but it was kind of like, I'm just doing this to make the night go on at this point. Um, but anyway, before the night ends, we do get a very cute call from Yuji, uh, who uh, he... he Again, this is one of those, like, Ryuji coming to the realization that I think the game wants you to, but in case you didn't know it, it's he's going to uh, spell it out for you pretty explicitly because that's just how Ryuji is. And, you know, this is not just a, a mission to avenge uh, what Shido has done to them and to Joker and everything, but it is also, like, by doing this, we can help protect the weak in this country who don't have the power that we have to do this. Uh, yeah. And it's it's a sweet, sweet little moment from Yuji that we get throughout and again makes me realize, oh, I just was not paying attention to these scenes my first time around because <laughs> I just did not feel the sympathy for Ryuji. But now I do and I'm glad I do. He's a good boy. He is. Uh, but anyway, moving on from there, we get November 25th, which is our mission start day uh, again right. in in the room. Mission start December 17th is the goal. Uh, but today is a little bit different if you played base Persona 5. But before we get there, you do also get a space heater. Yay! And you have to make sure to water the space heater every day to get your kindness up. Yeah. And and then it'll grow great. It doesn't do anything, right? Um, I think it can, like, run out of fuel. Okay. I don't, I don't know if I ever interacted with the space heater after it showed up. Yeah. The first yeah. time around. But... Oh, no. Never mind. No. It just... Because there no. was, if you click it, there is some incidental dialogue where they're like, it seems to have enough, uh, you know, oil to keep going or whatever. But yeah, I don't think there's anything. I, th I mean, I think it's it's almost December and it's cold. That's why there's a space heater. Fair enough. Meanwhile, it's almost December in San Francisco and we had like a 70 degree weather day a day or two ago. So, yeah, I, I well, miss you know, winters. Tokyo is very different from, from San Francisco. What? Explain more to me, Tom, please. Big Hero 6 lied to us all. <laughs> How dare they? Baymax is the villain. Uh, anyway, moving on, December 25th, we get our space heater. Uh, we get a, another cute little scene, just uh, Morgana around the space heater, sort of worrying that, like, oh, this might be the end of the Phantom Thieves after all this. And, you know, this has sort of been his purpose for living. Uh, and, and going, you know, he kind of has this goal of trying to figure out how to become a human again because he's stuck as a cat and confused about all that. It's kind of been pushed to the side, but, you know, he's worried about his phantom thieves at the moment. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we have that happen, but we do get some royal additions here, which I was glad to see. Uh, Kasumi shows up after school uh, enjoyably after Sojo was like, Hey, you shouldn't be working down here. What if uh, he's like talking to Morgana? It's like, what if, uh, or no, he's not talking to Morgana. He's just like, what if a student shows up? And then Kasumi Futaba. shows up. No, oh, Futaba, yeah. thank you. Because Mor Morgana is there. And then I was like, wait a second. Sojiro can't hear Morgana. I wish he could. That would be fun. It's really rude. I was also thinking about this this week that it's really rude that they don't just like tap the metaverse button and bring him into the metaverse for five seconds yeah. so Morgana can talk and then like go back out. Yeah, it would be just a real way to ease up conversations going forward. But yeah. Alas, anyway, uh, they're having that conversation. Kasumi shows up 
uh and and Sojiro quickly realizes like oh she knew what was going on okay never never mind it's fine uh but right. we we get a, a very valid question i was really happy to see the scene because i did think it uh, like it's very cool that she shows up in size palace but then it's like okay what were you doing there though why why were you there and all this um and she basically tells us you know that day we were having lunch together she had the feeling things were you know gonna happen something was up so she tailed us home and saw us you know jump into size palace which i i love this idea that again we had everything figured out we were all planned out we had no idea kasumi was following us yeah and Um, also i like the i like the dig morgana does of like we way sneakier than when makoto was following us. yes which is is such a great yeah to makoto just being on the street oh hello i didn't see you there um but we have that happen and she also really uh makes sort of uh wants to make a deal and and become part of the phantom thieves now you know initially we had uh offered her a spot and she said no and now she's like hey i want to be able to use these powers that i have if i have them i should be doing good with them let me help you all out here and she suggests suggests ah excuse me she suggests to lend a helping hand i couldn't say the word suggest for some reason uh and frustratingly we refuse it (laughs) Did you think this was the moment? I was so excited that they were like, oh, we're going to have Kasumi in the party for the final palace. And she's not in the party for the final palace. Yeah. <laughs> so like, oh, come on, guys. Think, think about all the cutscenes they would have to change. I know. Was. No, like I under, <laughs> it was very funny because I could hear the like producer in the background of the dialogue being like, we can't introduce her. It's going to be way too much extra work for all this. Yeah. So we're just going to say thanks, but no thanks for now. Yeah. And uh, the reasoning is fair because she'd only ever been in like one palace. Right. And so for a day, clearly she yeah. can, ca- she can handle herself, but like, like it's would be weird to throw her into like literally the hardest enemy we've ever fought and just be like, yeah, come on and join us. Like, exactly. Yeah. So the logic does line up, but also 100% the reason she's not joining your party right now is because they would have to change so many scenes going forward. Exactly. Yeah. It is a, a, a reasonable and understandable, I think cost saving measure for the production and lives of the developers. But it is very funny. Cause it's like here it is. Oh, yeah it's not happening but uh yeah i I think the the logic sound there and especially yeah if you consider just how many orders of magnitude above almost everything else shido is to this group it does make a lot of sense yeah it's it's still a bummer uh and and she's sad about it too like she very clearly is like oh i understand but is is disheartened by it but basically is like just promise me you'll return and and you do and and she's like i believe you and I hope I hope we're right because she should be in a palace at some point. Anyway, that happens, and then we get our first sort of free time day. Yeah. So Tom, what did you do on Mission November start. 25th? Yes. I uh, I leveled Haru, and I'm dating Haru. Oh, congratulations! Yay! Nice. Haru is the one I wanted to date this time because um. Of all the people that you say no to, she is, like, legit sad about it. <laughs> like, like there's a lot of times when y- you, like, get a choice about dating somebody and, like, saying no will just kind of, like, be like, yeah, we're good friends and it's, like, great. And, like, this is one of those moments where when you say no to Haru, it's, like, very clear that that character actually had a crush on Joker yeah. And, like, when you say no, you're, like, actually letting her down. <laughs> That's such a so bummer. I, I wanted to actually do it this time and, and see what that relationship was like. And I'm glad. So we're now dating. Awesome. Well, congratulations. I'm excited to hear how it goes between the lovely couple. Uh, but, yeah, I uh, I also hung out with Haru during the day. But only got her Stay to, like... Stay away from my woman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, only got to rank four. So don't worry. I'm not a threat at the moment. It's okay. Uh, yeah, what now did, you know why I was, like, rushing hard. Yeah, too. now I understand. Uh, what did you do in the evening, though? Uh, and then I leveled Oya. Nice. Um, and I was given the choice to date Oya, and I had a girlfriend already. Good. And also, um, it's just weird. Yeah. it's I had a girlfriend. Sorry, I can't do this. That's the only reason. Um, yeah, I, I hung out with Haru in the day and did, like, a bunch of my shopping and upgrading. Like, I, I, I switched out all of our uh, weapons upgraded and and uh customized guns etc etc uh and then in the evening 
Oya wasn't leveled up, so this is the first week that I've really been able to take advantage of Chahaya's, like, affinity thing. So just to avoid wasting too many nights, I've started putting points into that and was waiting. So Oya wasn't available to hang out for a rank up, so I worked at Crossroads because uh, I do know I can get a... Uh, a mementos request there after working oh, a few yeah. times, so I'm just doing that to get to there. Nice. Um, but yeah, that was that was all I did on the 25th. Uh, and then, yeah, we have a few days of free time ahead of us, so uh, let's run through it. What'd you do on November 26th? Uh, so I leveled Makoto during the day. You stay away I'm... from her. <laughs> <laughs> I believe got her up to eight at this point. Nice. Um, and then I leveled, or I went to the planetarium with EY in the evening. Oh, how sweet. Cause, cause I'm now at the point where by the end of this week, I have Oya at nine and EY at nine. And those are my only two evening people left. Okay. So after two more evenings, I'm going to literally have nothing more to do in the <laughs> evenings, confidant wise. Okay. Um, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's know. no reason for me to like put affinity into them because it's like, I'm going to have two evenings. No, totally. Fine. You might as well hang out, see if you can get like extra tchotchkes for your room or whatever. Right. And the, the actually the hangout with EY doesn't get you a, a present, but it was like a really sweet conversation about like EY, like looking around at like the families of like parents with their kids and like wondering what makes a good dad and like wanting oh. to be a good dad for his kid. And it's like actually like a really sweet little scene. I appreciate that. That's that's yeah. sweet that there's a, a little bit of something I didn't see the first time around, but I am as I've been hanging out with him more is, is the texture to like who he is as a person. Yeah. Which I appreciate. Um, was that, that was your evening you said? That was my evening. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I hung out with Futaba during the day to get her to max rank. So we're, nice. we're friends because she is my little sister. Yes. Uh, and then during the evening, I went to the maid cafe so that I could get all the stamps I needed to get the special meal because I want the trophy. Sure. These have been several wastes of nights. This is the first time I was rude to the maid <gasps> because the game wants you to because you get guts for doing so. <laughs> Well, what I love is because the first few times I was nice to her and I was like, oh, I got kindness because I was nice, even though Morgana seemed upset that I was nice to her. So then I was rude and got guts and I was like, well, you still showed you know how to interact with people. So here's kindness again, too. And I was like, what? What? OK, I just don't understand yeah. it. Anyway, that's the moral of Persona 5. Be rude to your servers <laughs> and you'll be kind. Yeah. Um uh, no, do not. Don't. Just don't. Tip well. <laughs> be nice to your servers. Don't yes. ask them on dates. All yeah. those things. Uh, yes. Be good to service people. Anyway, November 27th. What did you do that day? Uh, 27th. I leveled Futaba and I got her to nine and did not date her. Um, and then in the evening I leveled EY and got him to nine. And, and did not did date. not date him. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, he's got a family. You don't need to me mess around with that right now. You've got too much else going on in your life. Yeah, uh, it would be unfair to the kid. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that day I uh, ranked up on. Uh, I believe to the it was the final rank. So nice there. And then uh, EY, I also ranked up that day. I think it was rank four or five. So I'm still pretty early with him, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, did that, and then that was that day. I don't think I did anything else of note on the 27th. So moving okay. on, what did you do on the 28th, our final day? Uh, on the 28th, I, and I guess we haven't talked about this, but obviously we could be doing the palace right now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, th this week I wanted to just kind of get some confidant stuff done, but also I like just didn't really want to do the palace to this week. It's you fair. know, like that's yeah. the funny thing. We talked about this a bunch, but like, that's the funny thing about playing this game in real time is like, if you're playing the game and you're like, oh, I got it's Thanksgiving, I got stuff to do this week. Like you can just, like you just didn't have, like don't have real world time to want yeah, to do a palace. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I didn't do the palace. Uh, so that week I maxed Haru, or that day I maxed Haru, and then I went and got sushi with Oya. <laughs> nice. Okay. Just to hang out with her, and I cool. did get a sushi teapot or teacup. I think is what they said. Okay. So I got cool. a thing for the room. That's nice. Uh, yeah, my final day, I got Haru to rank five as cordial friends that we are. Yes. Uh, and then I went back to the maid cafe to just get it out of the way to get my trophy. I guess slight spoilers if you haven't done the maid cafe thing. 
uh, just for five seconds. I just thought it was really funny that you you go back and it's like time to get the special item and it's just the menu. You just get the whole menu is the special <laughs> item. I was like, oh, yeah. okay. And you yeah. also get a photo and she scribbles over the photo with her signature over your face. Yeah. Great souvenirs. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I got the trophy. That's all that matters. I'm just going for that platinum. I'm just living yeah. that trophy hunt in life. And uh, that is how I ended this week. What nice. a way to end November 28th. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a, that's, that whole maid cafe thing is very funny, but it's worth, I mean, like, that's the thing is like all of these, there are so many little side activities like the fishing and the batting and the, all that, that are like really fun to just go through once totally. and just like kind of see what they're like. Yeah. Especially if you're playing for the first time, like obviously we're a bit late in it now, but trying everything at least once in the world is worth doing. Uh, and then yeah. as you find the time, dig into the things that you care about or the trophies you care about. Right. But yeah, I am now I'll, I'm very close to maxing everybody. Nice. Um, I, I think that there's like, after this week, there's like 20 days left or something Okay. In, before the deadline, right? The 17th. Uh, yeah. There's yeah, like that's... something like 20 days or yeah. 19 days, something like that. Um, I have... Oh God, what was it? I have four spare daytimes that I could have and still max everyone out. And that includes like, um, the need for like Shinya's mementos. It includes needing to do like three days or whatever for the palace. It includes needing to go to mementos one of those days. Uh, I, I, if I can line it up, should be able to max everyone out before this deadline. Nice. Um, I don't, because, because it's, it's I have two evenings I have to spend and then I have Futaba at level nine, Makoto at level eight, um Shinya. Shinya at level two. Yeah. And then yeah, like so so I'm close enough that I like I think I'll be able to do it. What I will recommend to you. Yes. And you're already probably already doing this. If you don't think you can finish everyone I would recommend maxing as many party members as you can before this deadline first. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is why I still have Shinya at level two. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's why I've been, I, I hung out with Haru so much this week. was like, let me focus on Haru. Let me make sure Futaba was max rank uh, on max rank because I realized I had let that languish. I think I have every party member down. Yeah. So now it's just a matter of, um, yeah, those side characters. And I know I have, I don't know if I'll be able to finish everyone, but I have Oya, Chahaya, Shinya, EY. I think that's it. And Haru. So I have a bit. Oya, oh, yeah, Chahaya, Shinya, EY. Yeah, so that's three nights and two day people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, so that's like mathematically, you should be able to in 19 days or whatever. It's um, just a matter of if the game lets me. So right. I might it's, do it's the if palace it lines early, up. So if the palace lines up, if the, the, the hang out with people lines up, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the funny thing about this. Like, now that I have, like, almost max Utaba and almost max Makoto and have nothing on Shinya is like, statistically it is better for me to be hanging out with Shinya every opportunity I get and just trust that those other two will kind of get finished where they can. Yeah. But at the same time, I really just want to max my party members. So like, I I don't know which I should be like, it's probably a bad idea to not hang out with Shinya first, but I like kind of just want to hang out with Shinya. No, totally. I I, I get that. I still haven't seen Shinya much. No, I I knew you. Yeah. I haven't seen Shinya much. So I'm, I'm hoping he shows up for these next few days, but yeah, it's, it's a weird place to be, and I, I guess I, I don't want spoilers for how the calendar works with the royal yeah, sure. content, so I, I won't even ask the question. But yeah, I am. I think I'm optimistic that I can get at least most of them, but I yeah. may have to do the palace earlier than I want to, and then save, as weird as it is, save mementos for after the palace. Even though going to mementos right. would give me more levels, I might have to save it till after. Um, or do two mementos trips. Uh, well, I don't want to get into spoilers, but that might not be an option. <laughs> True. <laughs> anyway, True. we're getting into the weeds now. We are. Um, and I mean, speaking of just as a like a heads up going forward, uh, obviously the uh, the day the last day for this palace is the seventeenth, which is a Friday in our world. Yeah. Um, just for reference, but. We uh, will also, as a a general recording heads up, we haven't worked out the timing, Tom and I need to do that, but uh, because the holidays, uh, you know, 
uh, toward the end of the year and, and family plans and, and time off, and I will also be traveling, uh, we won't be able to record week by week. So we're going to be banking a little bit. So some weeks we won't be able to respond to viewer comments on the show or, or, or sort of, uh, you know, line up uh, questions for uh, the, excuse me, the quizzes and, and whatnot right. uh, w- with your answers. But we'll we'll still have stuff going on, obviously, and still be talking about things and, and aim to have the show up every week. But we will be sort of like batch recording some of them just to be able to get through everything. Yeah, and we'll try to let you know as that stuff happens. It just happens to be that, like, the busiest day in this entire game is, like, Christmas Eve, and, like, we don't really want to be, like, taking time away from family to be doing that. Exactly. So we're going to try to figure it out. We'll, yeah. We'll, it'll be fine. It'll it'll be hopefully seamless for y'all. Yeah, it'll hopefully work out for everyone. But, yeah, Christmas Eve is a Friday in our world. Christmas is a Saturday, and the day after Christmas is a Sunday. I won't be near a PlayStation during any of that time. So I will right. need to play anyway before then. So, yeah, we'll we'll slightly be breaking the rules of us playing week by week, but trust <gasps> that the show will still be happening week by week. Um, I, I think that we should take our time. Fair enough. Okay, we'll just delay and do it next year. Mm, yeah, we'll take a year maybe break. Not, maybe not that much time. <laughs> I'll see you in a decade when we finish yeah. the game. Uh, but yeah, that will be sort of... Uh, coming up just as a heads up but we'll we'll get into details obviously we're not going to be talking about the palace next week so don't feel like you have to rush it out there but yeah just as a as a heads up for that stuff but that pretty much uh takes us through the week uh tom i don't know if you want to deal with a confidant this week or just go right into quiz yeah let's do let's do confidant next week because we've got uh the we got a couple weeks of free time cool especially since we'll have uh some weeks where we can't uh interact with viewer questions so we'll need confidant time then but uh yeah why don't we wrap up then with our uh, quiz questions? I'm going to have actually you start because I didn't want to mess up the recording. So I am pulling up the personas on my phone right now. So give us your pop quiz question for the week. Okay. So the pop quiz question for this week is quite simple. Uh, it was a throwaway line. It's somewhere in there. I don't even honestly remember where, um, but somewhere in this week. The question for you all this week is what's the name of the new political party Shido is forming? They mention it once. That's your question. What's Shido's new political party? The ba- uh, the bad dudes party. The bonus quiz question for this week is: If you roll two d six six times, what is the what are the odds that you don't roll a multiple of four? <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because genu- Tom needs an answer. <laughs> I genuinely would like to know. <laughs> uh, yes, please write in with your uh, pop quiz question answers plural this week uh, i think it's a relatively easy statistics question i'm a, i was a design major though so like i think it's basically just like what's 25 percent times six ish 25 percent ish times six is basically the answer to that question i'll go on wolfram alpha but yeah that's uh, to the find way. out and then i can tell you if you got the right answer <laughs> yeah that's basically what you need to do when you're you're double checking your your math homework um yeah uh yeah i stopped I, I studied film, so math went out. But I was actually very good at math, and then I was like, I don't need this anymore. Movies. The the day I got admitted to, uh, I got accepted to design, like an art and design program for college, I literally called my admissions counselor uh, and said, can I drop my math class right now? And they were like, <laughs> yep. Nice. And I just l- never went back to math in high school. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, I could not drop classes in high school, but I wish I could. Uh, yeah. Anyway, well, please uh, please write your, your answers down to those questions and let us know about your math high school experiences in the comments below. Uh, <laughs> but in addition to that, Tom, I do want to quiz you. I hope this will be an easy one to begin Shido's Palace. Uh, who is... No, I don't need ads for, for Cyber Monday sales. Get out of here. Uh, oh, but what are you getting? Who is... Nothing. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. I'm I'm good on that. I will tell you, there are a couple games I was looking for sales, and gosh darn Nintendo, they don't put the games I want up on sale. Uh, anyway, who's the self infatuated star? What? Yeah, who's the self infatuated star? I fought them this time. Oh, then it must. Uh, so star. That's what the, the, the wiki is telling me. I apologize if they have a different name in Royal. No, 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 no. No, it might not be. It's. I thought you were going to go with the doggo. I was thinking um, about it, but... 
That's that's a low that's a slow pitch though. Yeah. Uh, is the self infatuated star Sarasvati? It is not. Oh, but that's a good guess. Then it's the one with the swords. It is not. Oh, then I'm way off. It is Narcissus, the one with the long hair that's covering their chest with like a hug. I fought Wait. them, so they appeared. This is this is fair game in my book. I saw them. Wait. Oh, I did not fight this person. That's so weird. Okay, yeah, I fought them like three times. <laughs> all right. No, I did not see this person at all this time. Fair enough. Well, I'm glad I got one then. Uh, I, I remember that persona. Okay. But yeah, I just did not see it literally at all. Fair enough. Yeah, I fought them huh. several times. Okay. Uh, the only power they have is to put you to sleep, so they're pretty easy to fight. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you. Thank you for your guess on that one, Tom. It and, got me. And thank you to everyone out there for listening and watching to take your time. Uh, we are live every Monday morning for your listening and viewing pleasure. Uh, if you would like to watch the video version of this episode and essentially see Tom and me struggle to Google things as we're uh, having the show <laughs> together, you can go to youtube.com slash uh, and, and watch our silly faces there. Or of course you can uh, listen to or watch this, or excuse me, just listen to the show uh, on your favorite podcast uh, platform of choice. I'm trying to get to, we had a new review this week. Thank you. Uh, if you enjoy the show and you want to review it or give it a thumbs up or follow wherever you're listening, please do so. Apple Podcasts is the best place to leave a review. Uh, just like Zelda Strife did. And Zelda Strife said, thank you both of you guys for doing this podcast. I have just recently binged this entire series and have loved every second of it. It got me through most of my long runs during half marathon training. So thanks for that. I thoroughly enjoy your analyses of the confidants, methods of playing, and your quick witty banter. I would say it's slow witty banter, but I appreciate the compliment <laughs> nonetheless. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to get to the extra stuff for Royal and reliving that experience through Jonathan. This helps stop the itch I had to replay through Persona 5 Royal for the third time in less than a year. Uh, keep it up, guys. I look forward to a new episode every week, and I hope you will continue to do something like this again, perhaps with Strikers. Thanks again for doing this. Take care. Zelda Strife. Uh, and thank you to everyone out there who's listening and watching. Yeah. And good luck on your half marathon. Yes, indeed. Good luck there. And good luck to everyone out there as we get into the Shido's Palace territory of this game. Uh, but as you can see, if you're watching the video version, it's time to go to bed. Morgana's been telling us it's time to go to sleep. We can't call Kawakami. Everything's a mess right now. We're on the on the run. It's just a nightmare. So we got to go to bed. Uh, thank you so much for listening and watching. Again, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at JM Dornbush. Tom is at Tom R. Marks. Uh, thank you, as always. And nice to steal you. Wait, post credits thing bonus. I forgot. Uh, did you go into the palace and then immediately uh, realize that you forgot to swap someone in for a catchy in your party and only have three people to fight? Yep. Yeah. I, well, I yeah, I ran in and it was just on Morgana and me. Uh, I luckily Nothing. luckily caught it, but yeah, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I got into a fight and I was like, oh, the hole in my heart is made manifest. I caught it and then put. I think Makoto in and I didn't have any ice persona. And so then when I was fighting the fire dog, I was like, well, this doesn't help. So I yeah. then had to go back and switch, but yeah, that was the thing I totally missed. I yeah. mean, I miss him so much. Me too. We'll see you later. Catch you.